Roosh is here. And Roosh is, the, is an author, blogger, and pickup artist, best known for his website, returnofkings.com. Returnofkings.com. Roosh, thank you for coming on. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I don't know how to pronounce your real name. Can you do that for me? Yeah, my full name is Daryush Valizadeh. It's a, a Persian name. Ever since high school, people started calling me Roosh, and it pretty much <laughs> it pretty much stuck. So. Yeah. Well, well, I'm glad because I can never not pronounce your real name. So. Roosh is easy. What do you? Would you like to take a a, a a chance or respond to my biblical question? Every week we have a biblical question here. And the one this week is, should you laugh or cry when someone dies? What do you think about that? I think you can do both. Probably you will cry first once you experience the loss of this person that you love who is no longer in your life. But then once the grief starts to die down a bit, you can start to laugh at the memories that that person gave you and the joy uh, that that person gave to your life, that your life is better because that person was in your life. But at first, uh, it's going to be hard to laugh. Uh, I think the <laughs> tears are going to come first. But then once you remember the person, not just at the end, but uh, during the experiences you had with them, some laughter can come out. As you know, that that person hopefully is still watching you now and can share the experiences you have, but in a different way. Amazing. Uh, you are known best for pickup artists, right? What is a pickup artist? So yeah, this part of my life started, I was 21, I was a virgin. I didn't know how to connect with women. So I found these communities online, pickup artists that were sharing tips on how to meet girls. And as a man who was in desperate need of trying to connect, I took this content like efficient water. I started to practice game and it worked. Um, at first I used game. I wanted to find a girlfriend but it took on a life of its own and it became just about scoring casual sex. I did this for about 15 years until I hit a dead end that, hey, this, this uh, hedonistic road is not giving me much in the form of meaning. And it's turning me into someone who is obsessed with the sex act. Yeah. who is obsessed with his genitals. There's more to life than, than that. I started to ease more into relationships. I had a couple. It didn't go all of all the way. So now, many years later, I'm 39, and I can look back and see what those experiences meant, and I just tried to take the knowledge and the wisdom that they gave me. And you say that this started at the age of 15? No, no, I started a uh, game at 21. Oh, at 21. What was happening in your life at 21 that you felt that you needed a girlfriend at 21? I, I would say that I was given a lot of the images in the TV and the movies on how connecting, how being with a woman would make you happier. Oh. Uh, that if you didn't have a woman in your life, you're lonely, you're a loser, how you <laughs> need to be attractive to the opposite s sex, your value as a man comes from how hot your girlfriend is. And I would say that that was a main factor that, hey, there's something missing in my life. I need a girlfriend. But, you know, I think a man or a woman has to accept themselves first before they can fit before they can think that hey bringing a person into my life will somehow complete me it turns out no one can really complete you they can add to your life but you have to figure things out a bit on your own be satisfied with your own company with your own thoughts before you can start to you know look outward well that thing that is missing is the uh, yearning for a father and so men and women, boys and girls who have that emptiness, feel like something is missing, uh, they need to return to their fathers. And once they return to their fathers, 
then that void would disappear because they would be made whole again. Are you, um, do you, what do you think about this idea? I say that women are sex dealers and men are sex addicts. What do you say to that? I think in the culture we are in right now, both women and men are encouraged and enabled to take on the role that you are talking about. Uh, women right now have a greater instinct to share their bodies online than to commit to one man. I truly believe that in the culture we are in, women are more eager to get the attention of a thousand anonymous men online who want to have sex with them than to only have one man in their life who wants to love them. Um, men also, they are seen as more macho if they sleep with a lot of girls. This is changing a bit as they push this toxic masculinity idea onto men that's turning him into soy boys. Whenever I, I'm, I'm living in Eastern <laughs> Europe now, Whenever I go back to Washington, D.C., which is where I'm from, there's a lot of straight men who act gay. They yeah. act I, – I, I don't get it. You know? so, um, yeah. uh, were you addicted to porn at one time? Me, not so much. I would watch it maybe two or three times a week. I know men who have a severe problem, but I quit that. I quit all – I quit all forms of visual imagery that is trying to artificially stimulate me. You know, that's what all these images and the porn does. They're trying to amp you up in a sexual way to allow sex to dominate you. Right. And then after that, they can sell you the solution in um, – whatever they're pushing in the media, the products, you look at a beer commercial, they're trying to harness this. So that's what they're, they're trying to do. So if you just cut that out, you'll find that your sex drive is not that high until you step outside and women are wearing shorts that <laughs> reveal the bottom of their butts. They're putting their sex in your face during the daytime. So it's hard to avoid this. I think, well, not I think, I know that most women are not into sex as much as they pretend but they use sex in order to uh, draw men in and addict them to sex so that they can control them because women love having control over men, over the children, over everything. They feel very insecure with, if they don't control you. And so women only use sex in order to control. But if men were to get hold of that and not get into sex until after they get married, then the women would not be able to control them because they would not become addicted to women. And they can wait and do it in the right way. Right, right way. What do you think of that? One thing for men, the sex urge in men is, especially healthy men, is very strong. Yeah. The people who control the culture, they understand that. And they try to get your – they – they create this low-level sexual urge that doesn't stop, that it's always on your mind more than anything else. Yeah. And as for w women, I think they get off more on the attention and the validation from men. They, they like the attention. Once the smartphone came out, the Instagram came out, to pick up girls became a lot more difficult because she doesn't need to sleep with you. She can just pull out her iPhone <laughs> – and get attention from men that makes her feel almost as good. Because listen, when a girl goes on a date with a man, at some level she has to satisfy him. She has to make him feel good about being with her. She has to maybe laugh at his jokes or maybe sh share a story of her own. But online, she doesn't have to do any of that. She just uploads a photo and all these thirsty men are saying, you're so beautiful, I want to take <laughs> you out. They So really, she doesn't have to do much. And so if I was a girl and I had this kind of environment, this culture, yeah, maybe I'd become an Instagram hoe too because it's so easy. <laughs> but, is it, is, but are they doing that because women are very, 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 mamma mia, all lies, see, so you're insecure, and so they need to have the world rotate around them so that they can feel a false sense of security? One thing is that, yes, when they're uploading a carefully manicured Photoshop picture, 
the chance of her feeling rejected is very low because yeah. she has uploaded a fantasy version of who she is. She's not really that beautiful in real life, which is fine. No one is perfect. But this minimizes the pain she may experience by uh, from getting attention. If she goes on a date with a man, he may judge her. He may wonder what her past is, what her sexual history is. Yeah. He may wonder what her life goals are. But online, when you're putting the images out, she doesn't have to worry about that. Instead, she is going to get one negative comment for every hundred positive ones. So it's really their v virtual l life that maximizes this attention gain while minimizing the real world that, hey, we're not perfect. You're not perfect, too. You have flaws that may have to cause you to adjust what your standards are in men. But online, I find that women believe because their Instagram has 2,000 followers, they can get the sports athletes, the famous people. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it really dis it really dis distorts what their value is and creates a bubble that I don't think is really healthy. Amazing. Uh, Ruth, are you married no, 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 no. I am single. I am living in an Eastern European apartment that is tiny. And I am the, one of the most rootless men uh, that, you know, I've been traveling continually. I have very I don't have any roots. So, uh, you know, I take that, you know, that I'm not saying that's good. I, I don't advise other men to do it, but I accept the reality of my life and what it has done. And I just try to pass on my experience to others that, hey, if you spend decades pursuing your lust, your bodily pleasures, you may end up too in a little apartment in the middle of <laughs> nowhere. Yeah. <clears throat> Are you, so you're not having sex out of wet at all anymore? I, I, I have minimized that. I have, but I still am, I'll be honest, if I am uh, horny and you put a sexually willing girl in front of me, <laughs> I can't say no. I, I mean, that's the weakness that yeah. I have. I, I can't say no. But if I have a girlfriend and she is satisfying me, I have no urge to go with another girl. But when I mean, I go I just went out to the uh, cafe to get a cup of uh, coffee. There was this tall, beautiful girl wearing a tight skirt. I mean, it's I'm trying to be good, but they're putting <laughs> these images of sex, putting their butts in my face, their <laughs> boobs in my face. I have to move to a farm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> well, there is an easier way to overcome it, I, and I'll ask your opinion about this in a minute. Are you a Christian? Yeah, I was. Uh, so my mom is Ar Armenian. I was baptized in an Orthodox Armenian Christian church oh. when I was around 12. But I don't practice actively. You don't practice it? Uh, I don't practice. I don't go to church. Oh, I see. Mm. Have you forgiven your mother for the things that she did to you while growing up? Have you gone to her and forgiven her for, you know, the little irritations and control and, and trying to dominate your life and dictate your life? Have you forgiven her for that? I am one of the lucky few that was raised by parents that didn't give me any issues, psychological problems. I look, I look back in the uh, childhood I had with my mom and dad with love. They didn't screw me up. I mean, in fact, they let me do whatever I wanted to do to go on my own path. I have no resentment. There's nothing my mom or did wrong. So I have a good relationship with them now. So where did your anger come from? How did you become angry if they didn't do it to you? Uh, I was a late Bloomer. I didn't start going through puberty till I was 18. So I, when I was in 16, 15, I was seeing all the guys get the uh, girls while I looked like I was a boy. I, I was 18. I looked like I was 12. Yeah. And then so finally I started to figure things out around 21, 22. I felt I had to make up for lost time to prove that I was a man. You know, I, I went such a long time, didn't get sexual attention from girls. I didn't feel like a man. So to compensate, I went on this fornication tour oh. around the world until finally I was around 35. I was like, I have nothing to prove. Yeah. I know I'm a man. I don't need to sleep with girls that, bear, that don't really care about me anyway yeah. to prove anything. How many women have you slept with? I don't like to say. 
You know, that's <laughs> one thing that I don't like. It's more than I need. You know, the weird thing is you can sleep with hundreds of women, but your mind only remembers the past two or three, or they only remember <laughs> yeah. the best two or three. So I don't buy this men are meant to sleep with all these girls. No, you're probably only meant to sleep with a small amount. Um, so I don't, I, I don't really buy that. So I just have to assume then that, or sound like you've been with a truckload. Yeah, I've been with girls that I don't remember it. You know, <laughs> I mean, sometimes I encounter an old photo on my phone. It's like, yeah, I slept with her. Why? I don't, because I had, you know, but one thing we have to say is that a lot of modern men now, they have nothing to do, no meaning in their lives. Yeah. So all that's left is to make money and get laid. That's right. I, I, I know guys that go to the club Friday and Saturday nights, not really because they like it, because there's nothing else to do. They don't have a woman who loves them or a woman that they love, no kids. Yeah. Their job is fine, nine to five. They got some money. What else are they going to do? You can only stay at home and... Uh, watch YouTube all day, right? That's right. So when you do have sex now as a Christian, I know you say you don't practice it. Do you feel guilty at all in when you have sex out of well out now? Uh, I, f I, I, I feel guilty if the girl wants something more from me than sex only. Like what? If the girl is, if she wants something longer term. Uh, like a longer relationship. Yes, yeah. yes. But if a girl is using me for sex because uh, she's attracted to me in the moment and I'm just one of many men that she's going to sleep with before the year is out, I don't feel guilty, no. <laughs> Do you agree with me that sex should only, in reality, sex should only happen when you get married and the purpose of sex is to create children, to have children under the umbrella of a marriage. And so when you do have sex, it should be a quick, bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. It shouldn't happen more, last more than a minute or two. It shouldn't take an hour or 15 minutes or 10 minutes or five minutes. It should just be a quick, quick, bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. I think not having sex before marriage for women is the most healthy way to approach it. I just wrote a book for women called lady. And I said, if you don't want to have sex with a man before marriage, that is fine. Don't use sex to hook a man. It doesn't work because a lot of women can give sex to that man too. In terms of for men, you know, I don't know. I really don't know. I think that some men, the problem is that some men are really scared of getting bored with the sex. A lot of men, they contact me. I'm you know, I've been with this girl for a long time. I'm getting bored. I'm getting the itch to yeah. sleep around. So I don't know how to solve that. But in terms of the female aspect, I think for women to delay sex as long as she can until, hey, this man likes me for me, not just what's between my legs that he's going to get tired of anyway. So let's give him some value that he's not going to get tired of. But they both should wait until marriage. But I'm talking about the sex act itself. When men and women, mm -hmm. husband and wives are having sex, men and women, period, they, they tend to make it last like 10 minutes or so. They lip it and lap it and carry it on. Shouldn't a man just get it over with and be done with it? <laughs> you know, I am more of a... Wham, bam, and thank you, ma'am. Ma I don't, I don't put a lot of effort yeah. into. I put more effort into what happens before the sex when I, you know, share good moments with her, tell her stories, and make her laugh. I think that arouses a woman more than the sex act. But I will say that one thing I notice is that when you have sex with someone too soon that you don't feel a connection with, you have to drug yourself up. You have to drink <laughs> alcohol. You have to, women have to drink a bottle of wine before they go on their Tinder date because it's not, so that yeah. tells me it's not that natural to sleep with a complete stranger. Yeah. This is why alcohol is, su if you decide as a man or a woman not to drink any more alcohol, your casual sex life drops down. It just drops because it's a needed ingredient to remove the barrier to yeah. sleeping with a complete stranger. Sex is not love. Do you agree with me on that? Some men and women think sex is love, but I no, say it's no. not love. 
you know, no, if you can drug yourself and sleep with anyone, I think that's something different. But sex with love seems to be a very powerful thing. I mean, that's but that's hard. That's hard to find. How many people don't want to wait years and years to find someone that they're truly compatible with? with they get this idea i'm lonely i need someone yeah so they decide to try to physically connect with Amazing. people that they shouldn't and then after they fail in dating because i believe dating doesn't work once they fail they start to get cold yeah. cynical they build armor around their their heart which really then blocks a potential connection with someone that they could be compatible with we have about two minutes at best um do you do you think that women should have careers or should they, they get married and stay home and raise the children I think pushing women into careers is the number one crime that we have done. Why? Yeah. Because women have a biological clock. They have a timeline. So if you're putting women on the same career path as men, which is four years of a university, then time and career to get established, you're wasting their most prime years when they can be spent having healthy babies and healthy connections. I believe a woman should have a family first. Yes. Have the fa solve what it yeah. has the shorter ticking clock first. That's your biological clock. Solve that first. Have a baby. Then once your kids are in school, you can go work cuz cuz guess yeah. what? You are able to work until you're 65, but you're only able to have kids until you're 35. That's right. It's amazing talking to you, man. Um Thanks. we're out of time. Tell the folks how to get to your website again and how to get your book. Yeah, so my main website is actually roosh.v.com. My other website, Return to Kings, closed down. I just wrote a book for girls uh, talking a lot about the ideas that we have uh, talked about. I think it will help them. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of girls who really want to settle down and love one <laughs> yeah. man. But if there is, women can go to my site, roosh.v.com. And one more book I wrote is for guys. It's a bigger book because solving the problem for guys is harder. This is game, how to meet girls. So we still have to use a little bit of game to approach a woman yeah. and <laughs> meet them. But hopefully men can use that tool to bond with women in a meaningful way. Ruth, will you come back again? Understand? Anytime. Oh, uh, man, it's a joy Anytime. having you on. Thank you for taking the time to okay, come on. Great. I really Thank appreciate talking to you. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. Amazing. Bye. Amazing!